It's your boy, Matty G, reminding you right now, go ahead and take that popcorn on that, the microwave, put that extra butter on it, throw some M&Ms in there to treat yourself, and get ready because Scott Larson is bringing the hashtag truth right now. Watch me. This is Four Foot Batman. And Four Foot Batman knows the home of great collectibles at awesome prices. Retro toys and collectibles, movie memorabilia, Magic the Gathering cards, wrestling figures, Hot Wheels, the always popular Funko Pops, and much, much more. He knows the Hall of Collectibles is located in downtown Cherryville, North Carolina at 400 East Main Street. Give them a call today. 980-989-5181 Retro Toys and Collectibles The heavyweight champion in collecting Hello everybody hey. and welcome to Hashtag True Tonight we have the one, the only Mitch Blake <laughs> And we're going to have a cameo I heard from Miss Tina So how you doing? Man, I'm good, good, how are you? I am doing great. Let me start off with the question I ask every wrestler that ever comes on Hashtag Truth. How'd you get into the business, man? <laughs> well, it's kind of a funny story. Um, I was uh, just at home, uh, you know, hanging out, you know, and I, I heard, you know, there was a there's a wrestling show in uh, Elkin, North Carolina. Okay. And um, I was just like, you know, I ain't doing nothing now. I, you know, I like wrestling. I grew up you know, watching wrestling and my, uh, not to get on a little tangent, but my grandma was a very much a huge Ric Flair mark, I guess, as you would say. And, and she used to think he was the prettiest man in the world, but, and we actually, um, buried my grandmother. She's, she's passed away a few years now. And we actually buried her with the poster that she kept of Ric Flair above the head of her bed. Oh, but, uh, that, now but, see, uh, that's, a good wrestling story right there, brother. I love to hear stories like that. Oh, yeah. She she loved Rick Flair. She thought that sexy blonde hair was the prettiest thing walking the earth. And uh, But, you know, like I said, I grew up wrestling. Wrestling was a very big part of my childhood. And I said, you know, let's go. I, you know, And I used to go when we was kids. We'd go see, like, Italian Stallion and and, and, and Ron Garvin and things. And uh, But we went and um, – I was just running my mouth, you know, really like being being a fan, which is, you know, uh, is a very what, what most good fans do when they go to a wrestling show. You go, you run your mouth, right, you hear, right. you hate, you boo, and you I, boo right? And uh, I went to the show, and um, I met this guy. Uh, his name, well, first off, was named Donnie Donnie Jessup. He, he worked as Bad Boy Donnie. It was like Yak and uh, Wrestling Lines. Okay, and. Um, I was just running my mouth and giving, you know, giving the heels heat and, you know, and, and everything. But, uh, and I hung around after the show and, uh, I was like, man, I can do this. I was like 19 years old. I was like, man, I can do this. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> uh, Donnie, I met the guy, Donnie, he came up to me, you know, and he's, he's like, okay, well, I said, who do I need to talk to? And he introduced me to a man who would become my second father, uh, named john brewer and I, I get a little tore up when i talk about him because when i when i say this guy became a father i, I mean he literally became a second father to me and right. um he, he wrestled around the north carolina indies and then wrestled some for crockett uh as uh the texas outlaw and he um did run the gimmick sort of similar to like black jack mulligan right right and um he, uh, I met him and he, he said, I said, uh, I'd like to learn how to do this. I mean, how, what, what I need to do, uh, you know, they told me to come talk to you. And I, I was a 19 year old a-hole, I guess. Punk. <laughs> we're <laughs> and, uh, all cocky. We're all cocky at that age. Right, you, know, right. you, know saying, you know the saying. And, and he looked at me. Dumb, I'll never dumb, get it with you know. <laughs> right. And I, and I looked at him with that smirky, 
or he looked at me with that smirky grin and he's like, all right. He said, uh, be, be here at this time and we'll see what you got. And so I thought, you know, I was going to pull up to a, uh, a gym or something. And, um, it was a little back road out in the mountain park area near Elk and, and it was at one of his friend's house, Tony. Okay. And he had his truck headlights on, and I didn't see a ring. And he's like, meet me there. And it was dark. This is dark. So I was like, okay, this is odd. I thought I was going to – I was a little <laughs> – I started to be like, all right, I'm going to end up in a hole. I'm movie. looking up the man's background at that point, right? Let me <laughs> right. find out what this guy's And I get about. out there, and they're all standing out there. It's like his son, Jeff, and, and everything, and his partner, Aaron, and, and John. And they had a mat on the ground with truck headlights. It's like March, man. It's like chilly. Right. And uh, – he goes, are you ready? And I was like, all right, well, where are we going? And he says, uh, fall down. And I'm like, uh, okay. And on the mat, he had a mat out in the yard and it was, was right. using the truck headlights for lighting. And he's like, fall down. And I'm like, well, what do you mean fall down? And then he kind of pushed me, not like, you know, to, to, to hurt me or anything, I guess, but he, he pushed me down. He, he made I, you bump. It's, it's basically right. what he did. He made you bump. He made me bump, and uh, so I took the bump, I, and I busted my head. My head hurt, and, and and I'm like, oh, my God. He says, he says, I can go ahead and tell you now. He says, uh, you got a long way to go, he said, and I said, okay, and, and that's basically all I done that night. That night, that was it. And that, like, okay. that sounds like the story that I tell, and it's a true story of the first time I ever got in a, a wrestling ring, and I was about the same age. But it was it was kind of different. I wasn't out in the uh -huh. field with 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 some you know uh, uh, with a mat down on the ground. I was in the ring, and I right. had to hold on to the ring ropes and and pull my arms straight out. And the guy told me right. let go and fall on my back. I couldn't do it. I was too scared to oh, do wow. it. <laughs> well, and I, he just wanted to test me, and he told me you know I'm always welcome to come back. He didn't tell me when to come back or what time to come back. Right, he right. He said, "I'm always welcome to come back," and and I came back the next night about the same time, and that's what he did. He wanted to see if I would come back, right? And then right. I came back, and then he started going over with me. This is what we're going to do first. This is a bump, you know. You take your bump, and then I started taking kind of a proper bump, and um, <clears throat> he's like, "Until I hear one noise, you will never step foot in my room." It took me. <laughs> it took me a good three months. I, before I even got to even look at a ring. Oh, and wow. I'd say get in the ring. Wow. I, 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 he didn't even want me. He'd done a couple of shows. He didn't even want me coming to the shows. Oh, wow. I'll tell you, man. Oh, this guy, oh, I, 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 I've heard he, a lot. I've heard a lot of training stories where, where, you know, trainers, uh, you know, will bring you in and they want to know if you really want it. They'll run you to death. They'll run you to uh, you, to mm -hmm. your puke. They'll, you know, you'll run the ropes until you puke. You'll 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 do everything. You won't do anything in the ring as far as wrestling skills, mm. but but they'll make you run. They'll make you you know work out or whatever. You know, uh, uh, do sit ups. You know what I'm saying until you puke. And if you come back the next day, they know they know you want to be a part of you know of something special. If, if you don't come back, then they know you know you was just playing wrestling. Right. Is that I mean kind of like what he did. Yeah, he put me through the ringer. I mean, I mean, ironically, the ringer. He put me through the ringer. <laughs> but at the same time, I learned to not only learn from from a man, I was learned to respect a man, and he taught me to partially not only become a wrestler but become a man. Right. And I wear I wear his name. Uh, on my wristband, I got a wristband with his initials on it that I wear out to every match. Uh, his name is John Brewer, and not it kind of leads him not kind of doing a, I guess a plug, right. <laughs> but we're we're working a show in Elkin uh, for NEW on June the twenty sixth. Right. Okay. Uh, it's actually a benefit for some police officers that lost their lives up in Boone, North okay. Carolina. Okay. Uh, but that's ironically that I, I messaged uh, his daughter Angie, my trainer John. And about doing a tribute because I hadn't been back to Elkin to wrestle in quite some time. Okay. And uh, she said, you know, that's daddy's birthday, right? And I, it didn't dawn on me. I, I knew it, but I'm like, oh, wow. So on that show, I'm going to be doing a tribute 
on his birthday to him. I'm actually going to come out to his theme song and pay tribute to him as I come nice. to the ring. Nice. I love hearing stories like that. So man. that 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 just kind of led cool. into it. I was like, we're talking about it. No, but, cool. um, hey, you 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 could do plugs all day long on hashtag. <laughs> It, it doesn't matter to me if you're gonna. Well, there's I'm, a I'm, there's gonna be a part in the show where I'm gonna say where you're gonna be in, in the future oh, and, and well, you can plug away, man. Gotcha. But I was just uh, gonna tell you too, like um, the one thing he taught me that I like to tell that really stuck with me of, of everything he taught me was to if you ever stop learning in this business of wrestling, you need to get out. Right, right. I mean, and that is this- true. And that that's that's anything though. That's that's anything you do. You yeah. know, people say that about wrestling all the time, but that's anything you do, man. If you if you really want to be the best or you really are striving to either be the best at anything, you, you can't stop learning. You you gotta keep learning and, 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 and accomplishing more in what and you be do. Your, and be yourself. Like one thing I stress to kids, did I say kids? I mean, one time I was a kid, but right. uh, one thing I like to say, and, I, and I'm by far not the best. I put my boots on just like anybody else, you know. And I just, I always tell people, just be yourself. Like if you don't go out and try to be Hulk Hogan, don't go out and try to be Roman Reigns. Don't, I mean, don't just go out and be you. Be what find finds you, finds your niche. Right, you know your niche yeah, usually, ain't Roman Reigns. Niche. When wrestlers, you know, find themselves and and they just jack it up a little bit, uh, fans will fans will start to to cling to that. Uh, when, fans when, will follow. When me and my wife go out, yeah, we're just like an amped up versions of ourselves, you know. Right, exactly. And uh, and I just you find what works for you. I'm not the best wrestler. I'm not I'm not a high flyer. I can't go out and pull a triple corkscrew moonsault. Hurricane right. Rana into a backflip Frankensteiner, you know? Right. <laughs> That's a heck of a spot if anybody can pull that, that, that off. If anybody can pull that off, off I want to see it. That, that's a mouthful. <laughs> if, you know, and I can't even repeat that again. That's the ironic part. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what but, everybody has to say coming up, man. Uh, Brew Capone said, what's up, Mitch Blake? What up, Brew? What do you Christmas know about Brew's Brew? What's up, man? What's up, Luke? The What's lone up? wolf. I love I love that picture, bro. Ben Wolf said you are a cheater. That's the only way you can win. Ben Wolf says I'm a cheater. You're a cheater. The only way you win is your manager helps you. Oh, are you talking about this manager? <laughs> that that <laughs> that sweetheart right there. You got it. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, son. If you had her on your side, you wouldn't be you wouldn't care if you cheated or not cheated. Because when you got Miss Tina <laughs> by your side, you always know you're a winner. It's only cheating when you get caught. It's only cheating when you get caught, and Miss Tina never gets caught. <laughs> uh oh, here we go. It's not. Oh old. It's wow! Great. I didn't know little Donnie knew how to use social media. Oh, in Burke County. Snap. <laughs> ben Wolf said Mitch, Mitch cheated little Donnie. Mitch cheated little Donnie. Hey Ben, no. how you doing tonight? Little Melody Donnie's Lewis, cheating. Himself. How you doing? Long time no see. Welcome back to hashtag Truth. David Camel said, the meme says, what's up, Scott and Mitch? What's going on, meme? What's up? What's up, meme, mime? Mime. Meme, mime, mo, mom. Meme, mime, something like that. Yeah. 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 He, yeah. Knows, he knows what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce and the Mafia. Appalachian Mafia is coming to Elk in June 26th. Uh-oh. I hear they will be in town on June 26th. I, I can't wait for that show on June 26th. It's NEW. It's, it's Kind of where I consider now my my home turf. This is my home area, um, right. but uh, it's it's nice to get back, you know, there in in, in the area where I started. Um, it, it's kind of like a almost like a homecoming, even though you know my character I am built from Orlando, Florida, uh, me and my wife. So, but but it is my home area. So that's that's okay. where it all started. So it's it's going to be great. I can't wait. <laughs> Melanie says she wants to be Charlotte Flair. She don't want to be Ric Flair. She wants to be Charlotte Flair. There you go. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, right there. If you can do a figure eight, you're good to go. <laughs> I do a. I, I can do a figure nine. Oh snap! You're gonna <laughs> yeah. have to explain that one to me. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Bruce said Mitch did not cheat. The mafia was there. See, see, know. I knew somebody that had glasses on in the crowd. Christopher Blake. said Mitch Blake, a true American hero. There you that's, go. 
that's my buddy uh that's my buddy ryan right there guys y'all give a hello to ryan he uh good friend of mine we went to school together so yeah courtney said ooh donnie courtney <laughs> says courtney that actually that is the infamous uh maya midnight she is actually my stepdaughter i love Uh-oh. you Court. there you go she is the daughter uh, of that oh, lovely lady okay i got you Melanie Lewis said, I, I used to could do that. The figure, <laughs> the figure eight is what I'm hoping she's talking about. <laughs> you know, I, I, and I love wrestling. I'm, I'm, I'm going to reveal a secret that maybe a lot of people don't know here Uh-oh. in my older, a in my older life. Out on hashtag truth. Here we go. <laughs> well, it's the truth. You, you want to talk truth? I'm going to give you some truth. I'm going to oh, give you okay. some truth. Uh-oh, All right. I, Mitch Blake, I, Mitch Blake. Do not currently watch television wrestling on a day to day basis. I don't either. <laughs> I don't either. Believe it or not, believe it or not, um, I walked into the living room and my dad uh, was watching the NXT pay per view that was on last night. And I think I watched 10 minutes of it uh, while, while he was out of the room. I think I watched like 10 minutes of it and oh, yeah, just walked away. I just, I can't, I can't, I, but now I can go back on YouTube or whatever. I go back and I watch all these old NWA stuff that I watched as a kid. I watched that. That's, that's what I've times. been doing. I, I grew, yeah, up, watching, I grew up watching the Continental Championship Wrestling. Yes. And I go back and watch, uh, you know, Dutch Mantel. And, I watched, and, I watched you know, the World Pritchard Class and, the other day. Right. Just, the Missing Link, man. That guy was awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, but the. It's, it's like a buddy of mine who raced in uh, NASCAR. I got a friend of mine. His name's David Rudiman. I don't know if any of you guys heard him, but okay, he, he's awesome. Um, but uh, he he told me one time when we were at a race because I, I well okay, I just, I'm going to reveal some more tree. Every story leads into another Keep story. Going. Keep going, man. Um, I love. Stories. I worked for Aaron's for almost 11 years, and um, I was actually the one of the one of the company mascots. So I did some NASCAR races, and that's how I became friends with with David was through okay. Aaron's and, and NASCAR. But he, but I was the lucky dog. I don't know if mm-hmm. you remember the mascot lucky dog, and mm-hmm. I was actually in one commercial. So okay, <laughs> yeah, wow, pretty cool. pretty, uh, that's pretty awesome. Now yeah. I will say one thing about Aaron's, not to interrupt you, but I will say so one you thing can... about Aaron's. You're talking about the place where you go and uh, rent to own, right? Yes, yes, yes. That that place, believe it or not, does a lot of sponsoring of independent professional wrestling. Oh that, yeah. That, oh, I mean, yeah. You see it all over the place in, in North Carolina. So they sponsor everything. Oh well, yeah. I wasn't the only wrestler that used to work actually for Aaron. There was a couple of us and we kinda all knew each other. It was kind of weird how we all knew each other, but but yeah. But long story short, he always told me it's kind of like wrestling. If I ain't on the card, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't there. You know, I ain't watching. You know, he's like right. Vayner. If I ain't in the race, I ain't watching. <laughs> right. Ain't watching. Right. You know, right. same deal. That's where I was leading into that story. But anyway, um, uh, you know, that's just that's kind of so. Me who was your favorite wrestler growing up? Who did who did you idolize growing up? Well, I had a uh, I had a favorite wrestler up north in the WWE territory. WWF, w, whatever. Oh, and see, I had, I love. I, wait a minute. I love the way you started that in the territory. You, you're going to talk territory days, and I miss those days, bro. <laughs> I miss them. I miss them. I miss them. Go ahead. Give me your answer. But I, I'm, I just, old, I love I'm old school. I am too. I'm old school, I love that. So. <laughs> but um, and then I had a wrestler from down south. And probably my wrestler on the south for Crockett area <sighs> Probably would surprise more people than my one up top. My one up top was Hogan, Hulk Hogan. Right, I right. I said my prayers, took my Flintstone vitamins, and <laughs> gave my pillows leg drops. Okay, you know how many right. mattresses and box springs I broke as a kid suplexing my pillows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I ain't no lightweight. I never outgrew it. Big, I never outgrew it. My thirteen year old in there when when up until about a few years ago when I got you know s- too sick to to lift her up, man. I I still did suplexes. We wrestled. I did oh, all nice. kinds of moves on her uh, on our beds and things like that. You never <laughs> outgrow that, man. <laughs> if, if my brother was watching, which I, I'm hopefully send this to him later. He's a truck driver, but. 
uh, another funny story that leads into that story. We used to dress. I'm going to embarrass my brother for a minute. We used to dress up as kids. We would tie socks around our knees and elbows for elbow pads. We would use shoestrings to put over our eyes to make preach it look it, like brother, a preach it. face paint. <laughs> and we would make belts out of these cardboard boxes that my dad would bring home. And we would wrestle. And I jumped off the couch. My dad was at work one Saturday, and I jumped off the couch at my brother. I had him laying on the table, and he moved, and I hit my shin on that table. And I literally thought I broke my shin, dude. Like, and the table took no damage. Like, the table, no sale. Did you sell it? Did you sell it? I, oh, I sold it. I went crying. Luckily, my dad's sister lived right up the road. Like, I literally went squalling up the road to my aunt's house. Like, Squalling, my dad was at work. And my did your brother, brother walked around a, bragging that he beat you up and and and, and did all kinds of things. No, to your leg. he called me stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we used to man. It, it was great. It was a good time as a kid growing up. Man, it was awesome. <laughs> oh man! But that's but my down south wrestler. Uh, I used to practice wrestling with my childhood friend. Always put him in the ankle lock. There you go. <laughs> Uh, well, I have I was blessed with big legs and calves from my grandmother and my mom. So if you've done that, I guess it would be the cankle lock. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, dude, like it's hard for me. I had to have my boots custom made. That's why I kept the same pair for twenty years. <laughs> wow, See, that's 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 cool right there. So so yeah. you've been in the game for over twenty years. 19. I uh, started wow. around March of, of nine. Well, actually, I was 18 when I started. It was about March of 99. Wow. I turned I turned 19 that May. May May the 2nd. Can I give you a little another little truth about May 2nd? Oh, yeah, hey, hey, tell all the stories you want. I love wrestling stories. <laughs> May the 2nd is the birthday of champions, bro. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to drop down. Number one is a guy that I hate in NASCAR is Kyle Busch. He's born May 2nd. <laughs> I hate him. I've met him, and he's a prick. I okay. I, if he hears this, I hope he hears it. You're a prick. Nah. I, you could have picked I, 364 I, I, I more days. NASCAR, I never got into NASCAR racing, but there was a time where I worked for this one company, and they used to do a, po a, a, a pool for every race. And what you would do is you would give $5 into this pool, and you and they'd put all the racers' names in a hat, and you would uh -huh. draw – a name, and if that if that racer won, you got all the money. Uh, and uh, a race pool. For, uh, and race pool. I I tell you what, there were so many people at that time. The Rainbow Warrior was the man. He he was yeah, winning Lord. every race. Yeah, he was winning every race. So everybody wanted that name, and if you didn't get that name, you hated the guy that got that. Name. <laughs> nice, that's cool. But go ahead, go ahead and tell your story though. I just had to put that out. I, I hadn't thought about that in years till you brought that up. Go ahead. Right. Well, number two is a famous soccer player, David Beckham. He's born on May the second, champion. Uh, I don't watch soccer, but you know. <laughs> right. Do I look like I watch soccer? <laughs> no. Believe three it or is not, believe it or not, it's the number one sport in the it world. It is. It is. But as far as me and you're concerned, it's baseball. Yeah. Yep. 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 We'll baseball with minute. baseball with football close second. Uh, amen. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about that's a whole nother. Don't even get me started. Right, right, right. Uh, number three would be a wrestler that uh, has passed on. If you, I don't know, you may have heard of this guy, the Big Boss Man, Mister Ray oh, Trailer. Yeah. Rest in peace. Just a, little. a few times, just a few times. And, and sometimes, if you ever watch me work, I would I do a little homage to Boss Man as well. I'll do the whole rope choke spot where he'll lay him on the rope and he'll go bounce back and he'll straddle them like kind of put him on right. the rope there with his yeah that's right. my because we had the same birthday and the other one other than myself is the rock oh that's my favorite that, that's, uh, uh, that is my favorite guy I, I, he only knew six wrestling moves he, he yes. was only really good at six wrestling moves yeah give that man a mic and just step back <laughs> Yeah, and that, that's what I tell people about myself. Actually, you going into that is, you know, my wrestling ability may be maybe a six, seven, but you know, you give me a microphone, man, I, I can make you some money. I mean, I ain't popping on myself. I'm just being honest. Hey, if you can make people hate you or love you, depending on whether you're a good guy or a bad guy, if you got that juice, 
that'll that'll get but you through a wrestling career. You, you, you know, at, and at the end of the day, the the main moral of the story is is everybody that that invests in that product and and pays to to see this show, make sure they go home happy. And them happy at me would be them wanting to kill me, like this lady called me a cheater. You know, Daniel Bryan was born on May twenty second. Well, he's just twenty days late of being a true champion. <laughs> well, I got lucky. I got lucky. Uh, the one thing that we talked about is we're we're big time baseball fans. We're going to get yeah. into that here in a second. But I was born April 9th. and if you know anything about baseball, that's somewhere around opening day. Hey, yeah, you were born on open. I'm sure it's been opening day before. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. A, a, a couple of times it's been opening day, and man, I love that. I love. Well, that. Can I can I ask you a question? You yeah. sure can. You mind if I ask you a question? Go so ahead. how did you how did you Scott Larson, the Scott Larson, get into the wrestling business yourself? Oh, well, to be honest with you, I, and I told this story many times on here. Um, how I got into doing this hashtag truth was. You know, I, like I said, I grew up watching, you know, Continental Championship Wrestling and WWE nice. Wrestling, WCW. The Monday Night Wars were uh, a bomb. Um, but when I came down here to South Carolina, I moved from Wisconsin, of course, you know, Brewer fan, to South right. Carolina. Um, I, somehow I ended up at a flea market where there was a local, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll just say the company, HWA was handing out flyers, you know, they uh, had some wrestlers there at the flea market handing out flyers to their show there. At the time, they were doing it at the, uh, uh, they were doing it in Forest old, City there. Old so, school way, baby. Before there was social yeah. media, everybody had to go out and do a little footwork, which nobody wants yeah. to do anymore. Don't yeah. even get me on that tangent. Right, right. Well, the two guys that were there uh, was Jackson Sane and Big Country. They were handing out flyers. I don't know if you know either one of them, but... They were uh, well. They were, I've, I've heard of about thirty big countries, so I don't know. You know what country he lives in. Well, he's the only big country in North Carolina. I'll tell you that. Well, right, is it uh, <laughs> or, uh, big country or Robert Ordway. Robert Ordway. Robert Ordway. Robert Ordway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that he was there. Well, I told him at the time I was doing YouTube videos. I was doing a show called, um, you know, um, I, I can't even remember the name of the show. It's been so long ago. But I was doing a, a, a where I do funny news stories and things like that. But I really loved wrestling. So I got to talking to, to Big Country there. And he's like, well, why don't you talk to the guy that runs the company here? And maybe you could do some videos for us or something. Mm. Well, it wasn't 10, 15 minutes later. The, the two bookers of the show show up. And I get to talking to the bookers. And mm. they give me free tickets to the next show. And lo and behold, it started everything. Um and I give HWA and all them the credit I always have. Nice. Um, I started going to independent. I didn't even know there was independent wrestling, bro. I just thought you <laughs> you you know went somewhere, signed up, learned how to do it. You went to WWE. I didn't even well, know of independent wrestling. Well, welcome to the Carolinas. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I didn't know what I was getting into, bro. I, I had I, no clue. I had no clue. Right, but but to finish uh, the story off really quick, I I I realized after you know coming on social media, I was I was huge on social media anyway. I loved I loved being social, and I noticed going to all these shows that nobody was interviewing independent wrestlers. Nobody was making a big deal, oh nice. and if they were doing them, they were doing the podcast where it was just voice. Mm. And I was like, man, I would love to get on here and interview folks and, and let them see who they're talking to. And, and right. that's what started it all, bro. I, I just started interviewing and, and it and it boomed. People loved it. And, nice. and I love them for watching. So thank you guys very much. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. I'm going to be wa I, I'm gonna be watching uh, from now on. So, of course. Yeah, that's great. So. Baseball, man. What what got you into baseball? Because let, let me tell a little story. Let me tell my little story. I, I first met this gentleman last week at ACW for the first mm -hmm. time. Got to shake his hand, got to talk to him. And first thing I noticed was his San Francisco hat. And, and that day you had a San Francisco shirt on too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I started, you know, talking to you and you, you know, found out I was a Brewer fan and we started talking back and forth. I used to watch a player. This is how we start talking is I used to watch a player that played for San Francisco back when he was in college. I used to live in Mississippi. 
And oh, we used yeah. to live not too far from Starkville, which is where Mississippi State was. And Will Clark and Rafael Palmero uh, played baseball for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. And I used to go watch them. I love it. I love it. You mind if I go get something real quick? I'm, uh, you go ahead. With go me. ahead, man. Go ahead. Go with me. But, We're traveling. Uh, We're traveling through time. There you go. But, yeah, man, um, I, I love the game of baseball. I grew up a Brewers fan. My family grew up Cubs fans. Everyone around – my family is is normally Cubs fans. Oh, look at that! Will the <laughs> yeah. oh, that's, that's my boy, man. About. That's my boy. That's, that's my shirt. I, I don't wear this shirt no more. I'm kind of retired it just because they're going to retire his jersey next year, 2022, baby. There you go. That's, that's my boy. But yeah, oh yeah, Will Clark, baby, the natural, the thrill. That's mm. it. That's yeah, it. baby. <laughs> and, and I've been I've been a Brewers fan. I grew up around Milwaukee in Wisconsin. You know, I grew up in the South too. I I had I my family traveled a lot from Wisconsin down to mm. Mississippi, Tennessee. You know nice. that area. So I got the best of both worlds. I'm a Rebel Fied Yankee, is what I like to tell everybody. <laughs> Rebel Fied Yankee. Yeah. Well, I, are you a Are you a Packers fan? No, sir. That's the only sport out of the three major sports that I'm not. Uh, that I'm not a uh, Wisconsin fan. I'm a Washington Redskins fan. And yes, I said Redskins. I did until they get a new name. They are the Washington Redskins. They are the Washington Portskins. Yes. My wife, my wife, because we're talking baseball, my wife had had to have me do this. <laughs> you could tell what fan she is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad. I'm just glad we're relevant again. I'm just. I think we're getting ready to go into a. Yeah, slump. amazing. We're both talking. We're both talking. We're both fans of a team. My team's tied for first. Your team is is in first. So it's it's pretty cool right now. It is a great day, but I do want to. Since we're talking baseball and it kind of ties into wrestling, I do want to give a shout out to one of my brothers who I am wearing his uh, shirt tonight, uh, Mr. Stephen Fry. Uh, Mr. Stephen Fry, one of the one of the many great managers in independent professional. One of the wrestling. many great managers, a personal friend and a brother of mine. Of mine, uh, only problem is, you know, we would be like the most perfect friends if he wasn't a Dodgers fan. Nah. <laughs> he's a good you friend know? of mine. He's a good friend of <laughs> mine, and I say that loosely because we every year are in a football uh, fantasy football league together, and we right. and, and that's how I got to know him. Uh, it was it was through that? So. And we're doing another one this coming year. We've already signed up. We're already ready. We're just waiting for football season to roll around, and yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Go Texans, man! You'll if you uh, bring me back on ever during football season, um, you'll see me decked out probably in some Texans gimmicks. So, but I don't even want to talk about football because we are one big pile of. In the words of the late <laughs> great Jim <laughs> Leahy, one big shitstorm, Randers. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. So let me ask you this, man. In, in yeah. The, in, in, in the 19 or so years that you've been wrestling, I love asking this question because if you tell stories, you'll, you'll definitely have one when I ask this. What is the craziest thing you've ever seen at a wrestling show with your own eyes? Whether it be something, 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 you, you, either a match you were in or a match you watch, what is the craziest thing you've ever seen? Ooh, <laughs> I've done a lot of crazy because I've I done a lot of crazy stuff in the middle. I guess early middle part of my career, I worked uh, for Dean Puckett, AIWF. Okay, um, <laughs> and we used to do some crazy stuff. Um, ooh, or something I've seen. Hmm. Yeah, either something you've seen or so. I've I've, I've had. I'll, I'll give you instantly. I've had people tell me they got chased out of armories with knives. I've I've had people oh, say that when they went to, out to the parking lot, there was people waiting on them with guns. Dude, when we were running the fallout, I am um, fallout um, gimmick. A um, few years back, dude, we had people in Concord hate us so bad they would wait for us outside trying to block our vehicles um that's one <laughs> instance um my my friend who's who's also passed on my brother we lost him almost a year ago um ricky cavanaugh they used to call him big chief uh, okay he came to every one of our shows and uh <laughs> they were these people and like he was a, a big supporter of us and fallout and and i'll give a shout out to those guys in a minute because 
those are my brothers too, man. And it was a very big part of my career. Actually, it's that time era that led me to my wife here, Miss Tina. And I, I'll tell you that too, if we don't run out of time, but I got oh, a lot of stories, man. I got a lot of stories. Well, hey, man, keep going. Cause I love to hear but, them, man. Keep going. But, um, but uh, they tried to block our cars. And I remember Ricky was like, oh, hell no. They ain't going to block my damn car. I run over their ass. I kill every damn one of them. <laughs> and he said, I ain't no damn wrestler. I'm a fan. You get the hell out of my damn way. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah, was I'm pretty- going home, man. It's 10 o'clock. Yeah, I got to go home. <laughs> right. Well, no, we usually all went out to eat. And, you know, okay. and, but so we always went and grabbed some grub. But uh, probably something I did probably was um, – we, I was in, in AIWF and we had a match in Elk and it was, it was called seasons beatings and okay. it was in a cage and it was against me, a guy named luscious Kevin. He works as a Kevin Clark now uh, for okay. AIWF and, and a guy who's actually passed away. A guy worked under Enigma. Um, okay. We had a three way dog collar match inside of a steel cage. Nice. And, and, and another thing that was special to me about that match not only was it a weird match, uh, my grandma, it was the only show where she got to come watch me wrestle because she had lost her legs to diabetes. Ooh, um, man, that's rough. And she actually got to see that show, but my mama took her. She had to literally almost lie to my grandmother and tell her that Ric Flair was going to be there just to get her to come back to the Ric Flair show. <laughs> <laughs> and I went over there and I went and I was a heel, but I still hugged and kissed my grandma. I broke character there for, I kept a, for a few minutes to hug my grandma. I didn't care. That's my grandma. And, hey, uh, you got to do it. She, gotta do she it, looked man. at, well, the bad thing is I had, <laughs> I had, I had once I, in the blue moon, you, you, you get a little pass for that. Right. Well, I had some face paint on my face and she didn't recognize. She goes, well, that ain't Ric Flair. <laughs> 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 but anyway, we had a three-way dog collar match. Did you whisper and, in her ear? Hi, grandma. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I said, I love you, grandma. Oh, and, man. uh, but she, we had a three-way dog collar match and, and I got, ended up getting put into a wooden, coffin and right. we set the coffin on fire that was probably one of the weirdest things i ever did oh, or yeah. or me and miss you were Tina. actually inside the coffin and they set the coffin on fire yeah oh i've been putting a coffin in two matches in my career me and my <laughs> wife tina we got put we had a coffin casket match one at one of the new shows and they actually stuffed us both in the casket and drove up the road in the hearse and <laughs> and it, that was funny too, but yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> but wow, yeah. yeah, that's that's what I love. I love when people put stories into into you know wrestling. That that just makes my day. Right. <laughs> well, uh, that that's a couple of the weird things I've seen. But yeah, I mean, yeah. So no, who was your biggest, who was your biggest rival through the years? Who was that one person that you know they always seem to put you up against that that you always did good against. <laughs> It depends on what, what I guess, era of my career, I guess. Um, I, I feuded a lot with uh, actually one of my cousins who wrestled. Uh, his name was uh, Dynamic D. Uh, okay. Wrestled him a lot in, in AIWF. And Kevin, Luscious Kevin, we had a feud that lasted a pretty long time. It was great. Um, ooh, wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> God, I'm sitting here, man. My brain's going a mile a minute, like just trying to think, make sure I don't miss any. Of this. So many, so many years ago. Um, well, well, you already gave an answer, so you you already gave somebody, so I won't make you think harder on that one. Okay. What about? What about? Do you remember the first time you ever uh, got a receipt for messing up in the ring? Yes. <laughs> what was that what was that about what what did you do wrong if you, if you remember i did i didn't turn my nose on a leg drop uh i had been wrestling maybe a two maybe a year almost a year okay uh and a guy a uh, guy by the name of the american gi um i know exactly who he is gave me a leg drop and i did not turn my head and he he didn't see he told me on the way down that I wouldn't turn in my head, so he stiff stiff the leg drop right onto my nose like straight out. He you know, and he you know he called me out on it in the back, oh. which is, but I didn't get mad. You know, I never got mad because I always stuck by what my training. It's a learning experience. Don't get exactly. mad and cry and quit. It's a learning. Experience. You learn. You suck it up. You know what not to do next time, and you move on. There you go. 
There you go. I bet the next time you got a leg drop, you turned that nose, didn't you? <laughs> Shoot, when I give a leg drop, I turn my head. What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> like, whoa, yeah, boom. <laughs> so yeah, that's 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 one. Uh, yeah, I mean that's, that's what is that's, what is your what is your favorite finisher finishing move to use during the nineteen years you were wrestling? What is what is your favorite finishing move? Everybody says I give a a great leg drop, but that's not my favorite one to use. My favorite is my. I have like a modified regal cutter. I okay. call it the I call it the Blake effect. Like he just kind of wraps the arm around them and you know drop them. I'll right. wrap the arm underneath. I'll get them like in a DDT spot and I'll wrap your arm underneath you and then I'll spin it around and just drop you. And that leads into the leg drop. Oh, sweet. Well, my <laughs> my esteemed colleague, my partner, the producer of hashtag truth just chimed in. He's got a question for you. He said, What is the best part? of wrestling today and on the other side of the coin what is the worst part uh i'm gonna say the best part of wrestling today is just independent wrestling in general not not none of your big shows i i think all be it big or small the indie wrestling especially now that it's getting back up and, and kicking due to you know last year um but i i think independent wrestling is the best part of wrestling not to, not to interrupt you with your answer, and we will get back to the second part of that question, Chuck, I promise. Yeah. Uh -huh. But wasn't it awesome, dude, at ACW last week to show up and see that crowd? That crowd. Oh, I was, was going to talk about that. I was, was going yeah, to get to that, but yeah. 400 plus people showed up at an I, outside I, venue. Yeah. And I popped. It was I beautiful. Popped. Oh, it was I ain't going to lie. It was I looked beautiful. at my wife, Miss Tina Cameo. <laughs> I said, man, there's a lot of people here. I'm, I'm, I, wow. I just was speechless. I was like, wow. I said, game on, man. I, right? I, game on. That's, you know, I've wrestled and, and, in front and of 500. Of and I've wrestled, the end of the show, too. That, that's what I loved about it. That's most good. of them stuck around for the whole thing. I, I've wrestled in front of 500 and I've wrestled in front of five. <laughs> I've heard. Now, that's one thing that is consistent with all 290 episodes I've done. That is one thing that is consistent. Now, get to the second part. On the other side of the corner, what is the worst part of wrestling today? Um, too much control in the big in the upper end of the wrestling. There's too many people trying to control everything, and it's it's killing. I think it's killing the product that the, I guess what you call the top dogs are doing is it's just it's, it's like rinse, wash, repeat anymore. You turn on if you even if you watch it, it's like rinse wash repeat rinse wash repeat which and that's just that's what turned me away you're from talking me. about you're talking about wwe and the and the and the and the tv I, I think I, from what i've paid attention to the A A aew product i feel they right. they've got a good product it's just i just don't watch wrestling you know right but um i'm just saying yeah the wwe product man it's just they they Mm, I mean, I don't know. From what I, I keep up with kind of headlines, I see them on YouTube, you know? Right, right, yeah, right. I understand what I just, you're saying. I understand what you're saying. It's almost like, and, 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 and maybe, maybe I can help you with the answer. It's almost like if you've seen one match with a certain wrestler, you've seen them all. Seen them all. Yes. There's no. You know exactly when they're going to do their, you know, their. <laughs> their finisher, you know, exactly where. There's a few that are out there that, it's, you know, it's can like. Do it. um, like the RKO can come out of nowhere, so you never know when he's going to do well, that. True, you know. But it's like, Orton, but. do you remember Starcade '89, Chi Town Heat? Which we'll get back. I don't know if I told you, Ron Garvin was my favorite wrestler of the South. I am a okay. Ron Garvin mark. I ain't afraid of me. We're all mark. If you're in this business, you're mark. I don't care. Oh right, right, right. You know? <laughs> but I love Ron Garvin. But do you remember Starcade '89? When Ron Garvin walked out with the World Heavyweight Championship and was facing Ric Flair as Ric Flair was the challenger. Right. He knew going into that match that probably Ric Flair was going to go over. But that world title meant something. Everybody that watched that show watched the build up. That world title meant something. And that's what I'm kind of getting at. This this new product now is like, okay, it's what's the world title? What it don't to me it's lost its prestige. Like you don't watch Raw. Or that, or that, or that pay per view, like for that big epic world heavyweight title match, or that that underdog being the world champion. It's like you know what's like. It's right, right. Like they're and not going to have. Uh, I can give you an example gonna, of what you're talking about. Um, 
they're not going to have Zack Ryder come out and pin Roman Reigns. That just right. don't happen anymore. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's, that's what I'm saying. I right. Saw. Well, I mean, when you when you look up and somebody's been on TV for two years and they're already the seven time w, yeah. uh, uh, WWE Women's Champion, and they've only been wrestling on TV for three years, it's like seven times already. It took Ric Flair, you know, right. forty exactly. years to be the thirteen exactly. time champion. That's what I'm saying, Ric Flair. You may have hated the character of Ric Flair, but by God. They wouldn't a damn person. Oh, you respected it no matter you you know, no matter if you respected Richard it Flair. no matter what. And he you always his wanted ass. to see the next guy who could take Ric Flair off the Rick. mountaintop. Right. Exactly. And, and, that, and that's what was cool. Back in the territory days, he would take his championship to every territory and he'd put it up against the best of the best. If he lost, he would stick around in that territory till he won it back, and then he'd move on with the belt and and things right. like. That. And I, I'm Curry, telling you, Vaughn, Eric, yeah, ring a bell. I mean, we could sit here he... all night and talk about you know lead ups to special matches back in the day. Yeah, and there are very few and far between nowadays that I can remember in the last ten years that I've said, exactly. man, I could not wait till that match happened. I, I think mm-hmm. to me the last epic angle or thing to ever happen in professional wrestling and like big professional was the NWO when the Hogan, the Hogan was the last epic thing. What, I, he, in my opinion, this epic heel turn. That's when wrestling, I feel climaxed that era, even on WWE yeah. side, they had the whole DX attitude thing going on. Yeah. Like both, both that to me, the 90, that right when I was getting into the business, I, I guess if you want to put it that yeah. way, um, yeah. Was was the climax, man? Everybody bought wrestling shirts. People was walking in Walmart that day. Oh man, Monday Night this. Wars and and all that. That was for real, bro. Yeah, that that that, that that's when it climaxed to me. That's when that's, I learned. That's when I learned how to use a remote control. I ain't even gonna lie. I didn't even know what the previous button meant until yeah, I got. How many people? How many people switch click, back click, channels? Click back and forth. Click back and forth. You didn't want to miss nothing. Yeah. Man. And exactly. you had WCW telling secrets about, you know, WWE. Yeah. You had WWE telling secrets about WCW. And, oh, my and not, God. And, it not was one great. Of us, and not one of us sitting there the whole time even thought to think, you know, they both just probably working us the whole time. Even with Swerve right? and Hall and Nash was a work, man. Right, right, right. <laughs> Without a doubt. I mean, they made it a work. Even if it wasn't, they made it a work. They they both made money. That's the bottom oh, line. Tons of it. Tons of it. And, and we all suckered into it. And, and we was all fans, bro. It was all like, oh, my God. You yeah. know, WWE's invading WCW. Ah. Uh, and then, you know, and then you had DX bringing the, you know, the big, you know, uh, armored tank to the WCW show and, and threatening. It's almost the- like we had different gangs in high school, bro. Right. Right. <laughs> we had the four horsemen gang. And then I was part of the NWO gang. Come on. Right. <laughs> Right, exactly. You know, you and, and and everybody had their favorite wrestlers back then, and everybody argued about who was better. Nowadays, I don't, I don't think you get that as much. No, you don't. You don't. Man. That, that's what we was going. That's that's what I spill my worst thing in wrestling is. But yeah. So, ask away, <laughs> Mister Larson. <laughs> that's crazy, man. So, um, let's see. I've asked you who was your. Who was your biggest rivalry? Um, what was what's the biggest match you've ever been in? What what would be what would you consider your biggest match you've ever Ooh. been? Huh. Well, that ooh, yeah, that's easy, kind of yeah. Probably um, probably about 2017, and this leads into another story. So be ready. Go ahead, go ahead, man. Go ahead. Um, it was an EW show, um, and uh, I was uh. The promoter Flip came up to me. He says, uh, "We booked uh, we booked Gunner tonight, and we're putting him against you." I was the com- I was the world champ at the time in NEW, the only Triple Crown winner in NEW. A little plug there. Sorry, I'm the only worker who's held every singles and tag team title. There you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm hey, nothing wrong with that. If, if it's the <laughs> truth, nothing wrong with that. But um, he, he uh, I got to work. Chad Lale, people know him now as Jackson Riker, Gunner, Phil Shatter, 
Um, great guy. I just want to first and foremost, he's he's awesome. Uh, very, very, very professional guy. So just get that up front first and foremost. He's super. Um, so I was nervous like two weeks later. I was like, oh, God, I'm going to mess this up. Oh, shoot. I'm going to mess this up. Uh, but but nerves, nerves are a good thing, though. Nerves yeah. Oh, I cold. still get nervous. I still get nervous. I do. I just don't tell my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but <clears throat> I saw working, you know, with the match was coming up, and, and I was, like, nervous. And But he walked in. I was, remember I was sitting there. I had got there early to, to work on some stuff. And uh, he come in, you know, introduced himself to everybody. And he's like, who am I working? And I, to me, I said, Mitch Blake, hey, nice to meet you. Uh, and he's like, well, what do you want to do? We want, you know, and uh, we just, you know, talked like it was anybody else, you know, and uh, went out and worked the match and had probably one of the best matches of my career, which never got taped. I got pictures, but it never oh, got taped. Oh, man. <laughs> but the, the main thing about that match well, one funny spot we did before the match, I'll tell you, we were uh, – I have one tattoo, which, you know, that it has three meanings, but um, yeah. I'll get to that in a minute. But we did a little tattoo spot, and I said, oh, you think you're big and bad coming in here and trying to impress all these people with all your tattoos and stuff? I said, oh, by God, I got a tattoo, and I pointed to my arm, and he's like, really? And he's like, act like he was going to laugh and hit the floor. And he says, you call this a tattoo? And then he come over to me. He said, stay there, stay there. And he come over to me and he grabbed the back part of my, my singlet. And he says, oh, let me see if you got one of these kind of tattoos. Trying to say I had a tramp stamp. Right, right. <laughs> and I slid out like, get away from me. Get him back, Rip. Get him back. And we started working the match. But it, it was great. The whole oh, match man. went. If I say if I've ever had the perfect, it was against Gunner. The perfect match. I, I mean, everything was spot on. And, and, and he's great. But the day after. <laughs> he had messaged me uh, on Messenger, and I'm okay. <laughs> and, uh, and I went ahead and thanked him for the match. You know, thank you for you know, it's awesome. Uh, love to do it again. And but he messaged me. He said, "Man, I said I I got it. You know, when I first seen you, he said I didn't really have high expectations going into our match. He said, but you definitely changed my opinion of, of working a, a bigger guy your size. And right. he said it would be an honor to work you any day of the week, brother." That's so good. I mean that that was awesome. I'm like, isn't, wow. Isn't it funny how people are are like that when they when they when they look, they judge a book by its cover. Right. Yeah, but I, I just remember I was so nervous going back to that match, and then my trainer, I could just remember I was sitting there, and it was almost maybe ten, five, ten minutes, and I could remember I saw, and I was, shoot you not, I shit you not, if I if I'm allowed to say that. Wait, I mean, no, you can say whatever um, you want. I shit you not. I could almost feel my trainer's presence, almost like uh, like almost like uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. That's when you, <laughs> you know? know a good trainer. When you go to do something and you feel that breath on the back of your neck, yeah. Like, are you sure you want to do and, that? <laughs> and I saw and I saw his smirk on his grin. He says, "Don't worry, son, you got this." And then they're like, it, it, I knew it was going to be all, okay. It was really weird. I don't know. It was weird. Is there anybody now, else I, got any, I, anybody? Go ahead. I I got one more question for you before we have to head out because we're at the fifty four minute mark. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny how time flies when you're having fun. Hey, Amen. One more question, Miss Tina. Miss Tina, when, you got a question? When did Miss Tina? No, I'm going to ask you. I'm oh, asking you're going to ask me. Okay. When did Miss Tina come along and become your oh. manager? Oh well, that's a, that's a good story to, to end on. I, I'll tell you this: this was in NEW as well. Her daughter, which was on here, you know, on the chat, um, Maya Midnight is her work name. Her her shoot name is Courtney. Um, this 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 person right here. Yep, that person right there. That's my lovely stepdaughter. Okay. But um, and yeah, and anybody, I will, I do protect her. So <laughs> keep that in mind. She may be an adult, but I will kill somebody <laughs> but uh um i was asked to go sing happy birthday to courtney's mom and i'm like well who the hell's courtney's mom you know and i, I and i didn't think nothing about she it said you know, it was said, me look you were talking and then she put up it was me <laughs> raised her hand it, up. <laughs> it was me yeah it's her fault this is her fault okay go ahead <laughs> it's all her fault <laughs> but uh 
I went out and I said, sure, why not? I'm, you know, me being me, love to run my mouth and do whatever to the, to the fans out in the crowd, you know, to get a, get a, a ruse. So I walk out there and this lady, I walk up and to where she is, they told me where she was. And uh, I seen this beautiful lady. It's almost like, you know, in movies, when time slows down, when a man sees this girl. Right. You know, I, it's almost I, like I a dream. Week. It's almost like Dreamweaver starts playing in Wayne's World, you know? Yeah. Right. That. <laughs> that right. happened. And she's sitting there in this, this red little polka dotted dress that her daughter had got her for her birthday. So I start doing my good my best david hasselhoff impersonation yes <laughs> i am a big hasselhoff mark that's the truth okay? okay i have i have a lot of collectibles in my bedroom but you're not going in there but you're okay. not going, that's my private area my private I, I'll, I'll let you keep your bedroom to yourself sir <laughs> anyway, but i go out and i sing happy birthday to her and I, i'm singing the whole happy birthday spiel happy birthday to you and i'm making it kind of romantic you know and, and i was like i love your red dress and your polka dots too happy birthday to you and uh she's blushing she's as red as the dress she's wearing and uh, i just go back on my way i don't really think nothing about it but i go to the back and i have my partner um who i think he's watching tonight his name's tj he was my partner in fallout jack yuma uh right. which it was oh my god he's one of the best tag team partners ever uh, i miss him i love him he retired but i love you i love you tj uh you know that but um i went up i went back there and i said dude have you ever seen courtney's mom and i'm like she is hot as hell <laughs> and so and then but after that i you know i she come up and thanked me for singing to her and everything we everybody went home blah blah blah, blah. Oh, but a few weeks, crap. the song dude so you thought courtney's mom's got it going on courtney's mom heard? has got it going on yeah oh yeah man <laughs> Shoot, yeah. i'd wait for her by the pool oh after there school. you go there <laughs> i know that song i'm yeah there you go <laughs> but uh but you know, about two weeks later, I'm I'm getting ready to work the uh, body bag match with with a guy named Big Daddy Flip, and um, they come up to me and they say, "Well, Courtney's Courtney's walking him out to the ring. His her mom wants to know if if she can walk you out to the ring." And I'm like, "Sure, why not?" So she like you're gonna say no to that, right? Hell no. <laughs> and uh, I remember she was so nervous, and she had borrowed some some gimmick clothes off of her daughter to use to walk out to the ring she was so nervous and i remember when she grabbed my hand and uh and uh she was just shaking i, I looked at her and i said it's okay you got this it's all right and she was just as meek as a mouse oh. and <laughs> she she's probably blushing over here because i'm telling this story yes nah. she is <laughs> <laughs> but uh we went out, we did our thing, and she, you know, didn't do a whole lot. She was nervous. She didn't, you know, out of her element, I guess. First, first time doing it, you know, you're, you're, you're yeah. off truck. You're just looking around. But, I, but there again, way? we, we were just acquaintances, and then we became friends. She wanted to start walking me out more. And then we started doing the whole fallout thing, forming a stable, and uh, which I want to end off on a couple things with that, if you don't mind. Go after ahead. this story, go ahead, go ahead, and um, um. So she started walking us out to the ring and started, she became part of the whole fallout thing. We were still friends. And, and then TJ was telling me, dude, she likes you, man. She, she likes you. I, <laughs> she, I'm like, dude, girls like her who were built like a Mississippi Brooklyn shit house with the finest wallpaper. You, uh -oh. buy. you know, she's a brick you house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm right? like, girls like her don't <laughs> like guys like me, bro. You no, know, it's we're just, no, it ain't happening. Little beyond I know, one day we were talking at a show and, and we realized maybe we was at a time in our lives and, and, and that she liked me. She kind of opened up to me first and it kind of shocked me. Um, so, and I still to this day um, don't know what I'd do without her. I don't <laughs> right? think about life without her. She right? is my wife, not only in the ring, but in real life. And she's my best friend and I love her. Go with all my heart and i couldn't ask god for a better woman and and still to this day i have to pinch myself every morning i wake up just to make sure that i'm not drinking <laughs> that's that's when you know you got it good brother that's i definitely you married above my pay grade bro <laughs> there <laughs> so, you go yeah but uh i do want to end i do I, that, 
a very special time in my life was when I got back. I actually partially semi retired due to a broke. I broke my hand on on a shoot job, so I was okay. kind of out of the business for two years, I guess. I got you know, and uh, I met a guy uh, named Keith when I went to work at Aaron's. Uh, okay, and he uh, had a guy that ran his shows in Lexington, and okay. uh, he kind of got me back into business. And I went and worked a show for Lexington Wrestling. Uh, federation and a uh, guy paid me 10 bucks and he i worked at aaron's with keith and the guy steven styles who ran the promotion in lexington called keith and then keith handed me the phone and the guy goes i'm sorry and i'm like okay why why are you sorry he said i paid a guy a hundred dollars who nobody remembers and i gave a guy ten dollars who everybody keeps coming into my leisure time store and who keeps talking about here in lexington wow yeah that's and nice and I that, said, okay. And uh, me and Keith started running. Uh, he he wanted to be my manager. This is before Miss Tina. This is before right, that. Right, right, right. Um, and he, he wanted to be my manager. So we started running shows, and then we ended up getting hooked up with uh, a guy in Lexington. I met this guy, and I want to give him a shout-out. I think he's on here, too, whose name is Andy Powers. He wrestled as Andy Cross. And he's one of the few people in this business that I consider a brother and he's retired, but I know he's got one more match and he's going to give it to him. <laughs> there you go. That's <laughs> but, what I'm um, talking about. And Don't take no for an answer, Keith, man. Don't take no for an answer. We all started running this gimmick and we started calling ourselves fallout. And it, and long story short is we had a marvelous run through Lexington and up into the Wilkesboro area and down into Concord for a company called Swag, and then we you know we've all disbanded and you know kind of went our separate ways. But I just it, it, I'm really thankful that Keith drug me back into this business because it, it was for the best, and 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 uh, and I just couldn't thank him more. And I just want to tell all my Fallout brothers that I that I love y'all, and and it goes out to Josh, Ricky, uh, that was all part of it. Guys, I, we called the Ford brothers. I just want to tell everybody I love them. TJ, Jack, Brandon, Josh, Top Flight, Ricky, rest in peace, Big Chief. And uh, just again, thanks for having me on here. And I just want to thank everybody that's been a part of my wrestling career. That, that it, well, before you go, tell everybody where you're going to be in the near future. Uh, Ju- uh, June 26th, we're going to be in NEW doing the benefit show. Uh, I think it starts at like 7 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Go Bulldogs. All right, Will Clark. Oh, little Will Clark stat. Did you know this? Not to get off, but it just, he said that. Did you know Will Clark was one of the only few players to homer his first minor league swing at bat and his first major league swing at bat? No, I didn't know that. You just taught me something. Awesome. And did you, do, do you know who he hit his first home run off of and where in the majors? <sighs> come on. Come on. We're talking baseball. Come on. I'm a true Giants fan. I'm, I'm sure you got that. The only I person that would come to mind is Randy Johnson. <clears throat> Nolan nope. Ryan in the Houston Astrodome. Nolan Ryan. I knew it was a big name. I knew it was a big name. Yep, 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 yep. But anyway, yeah. But I just want to give everybody a shout out and just, uh, you know, thank you for having me. Uh, Bro, it was Tina a pleasure having you appearance. on here. It's a pleasure having you on here. Miss Tina, it was a pleasure seeing her. Uh, one of these days, we're going to have to get you over here and let you answer some questions about him. He's you can have to get you over here to answer. Hey, we can play that. Uh, we can play that couples game where you can have me and her on here at the same time. You can ask questions like, "What is Mitch Blake's favorite yeah. food?" Yeah, and then I have to answer her. But I'll just play. I'll just there play. you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Anniversary game or something like that. Whatever they yeah. call it. The yeah, newlywed so. game. The newlywed game. Oh, and June 26th, NEW, like I said. Oh, and July, I see, I think July 3rd, I will be, I, I think it's pending confirmation, I will be in uh, Boone, North Carolina with uh, Excalibur Championship Wrestling. Nice. And then July 31st, I will be at ACW, which has become like our new home, mine and Miss Tina. We are very thankful to ACW. Just want to give them a shout out and just, Thankful and gracious that they've helped I've me. been there. I've been there, and I will be back. So hopefully, I'll be uh, on that show also. I thank those guys. I'm actually. Uh, we're actually. I have. I am still a technical. I'm not a um, on the camera. I'm not a signed ACW wrestler yet, but I did earn that opportunity by defeating Little Donnie in a 
Cracker Jack match. I mean, Lumberjack match. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it. Everybody said it was a slobber knock. No, I didn't. The dude, I was so in, I was so wrapped up in my own match that uh, night with with the ACW Tag Team Champion. Little Donnie is a tough. It's hard to, it was hard to Buford, watch. In the words of Buford T. Justice, Little Donnie is a tough son bitch. Oh yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> He's got, but uh, we're going to be there. We're going to be in July. And then I think July 31st is, is, is what I'm up to right now. I, I'm an old man, so I'm not this young cat no more that goes out every week. Bro, if it ain't written down, I don't remember it. So I got you. I got yeah. you. But uh, that's where we're at. We're just July 31st. Uh, just come out to ACW. Come out and, and see what Appalachian Championship Wrestling has to offer and come out and see what North Wilkesboro Extreme Wrestling has to offer and uh, and come out and see Excalibur, man. All great companies. Really happy for the opportunity that they chose to invest in me and i'm thankful i try to tell everybody that i'm just thankful you invest in me and that's, that's all go. i ask there you go and the fans are thankful that you show up and wrestle because I, I i definitely uh i heard a lot about you and I, i've definitely uh uh they they have it recorded so i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna watch it um a friend of mine uh recorded the whole thing so can i'm gonna go back to me and can you send that to me um i can find out if he'll do that or if he'll let, allow me to do it once he sends it to me uh, mazel tov. Yeah. yeah, all that. Yeah, mazel tov. <laughs> and, and go Giants, go Giants. Let's let's let's, let's win the NL well, West. That's, Look, that's that's how I was gonna end the hashtag today. I was gonna say, man, here we go, Mitch Blake and Miss Tina. You don't want to miss them out there at any of the local organizations here in North Carolina and South Carolina. They will do you proud. And we're gonna end it like this. Yes, sir. You might be a San Francisco fan. I love Will Clark. But it's the Brewers' year this year, and that is. <laughs> yeah, you guys knocked us out of the COVID season last year. You swept us in a three-game series. I hate you in San Francisco, really. But it wasn't our time. It's our time the Brewers now. Brewers are gonna win it in twenty twenty-one, and that is the hashtag, hashtag truth. truth.